Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a quiz app in Unity and welcome to episode 3. In this tutorial we are going to add a little bit more UI in the sense of panels and we're also going to start some C Sharp programming. Don't forget, click subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and everything else on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So I want to start with the c -sharp programming first and foremost. Uh, I know a lot of people like me kind of want to just get straight into programming, um, but there is a lot to learn for new people to programming, but it's not complicated. Uh, I think the sooner we get it out the way, the better in many, many ways. So firstly, let's create a new folder specifically for any scripts that we create. So make sure we're in the assets section down here. Right click, create folder. We'll call this scripts. Let's head inside there and let's create a new C sharp script. So we can right click, create, and click on C sharp script. And now it is important what you name your script at this point. Now I'll explain why when we have the script open. So this script is going to be to rotate the background of our game. So that red background that we've got, I want it to kind of rotate very slowly, um, just to give it a bit of visualization more than anything. So the script is going to do that. So let's call this rotation background. And then let's open that up in Visual Studio. So all you need to do is either double click or hit return and it will start up Visual Studio. Now, obviously your, different, your version may differ from mine. Uh, you may want to use something different to do your programming in. Um, Visual Studio does come bundled with Unity in a nice easy sense. So that's probably by default the easiest one to use. I find it very useful as well. And it's also very handy for tracking down errors as well as using the console in Unity itself. So when the script is loaded, by default, it will look a little like this. And this is just a standard default script. Any script you create within Unity will have this standard layout. Now there's a couple of things on here which may confuse people, a couple of things which may be a bit peculiar, but don't worry about them. First three lines we have here, this is the namespace. So a quick and easy way of thinking about this is a way for the script to recognize where to pull information from to understand the code. So for example, if we were to use some kind of UI elements within this, we'd need to add in a line in the namespace so the script recognizes any UI lines of code. Now the public class is rotation background. And as I said, this has to be identical to the name of your script. So if you've called your script um, Mr. Willy Wonka, for some random reason, then the public class name would also have to be Mr. Willy Wonka. It has to be the exact same. If it isn't, the script will not work correctly. Further down, we have an open curly bracket. And if you follow the trail down, you'll see we have a closed curly bracket. This dictates that everything in here is an enclosed section. You notice these little sections also have it, a start and an end. <clears throat> So these are known as methods. Now a method can come in multiple different ways. The two that it gives us is void start and void update. Void start is run once, and that is when the script loads. So for example, if this script is attached to an object in Unity, that object is turned on, whatever is in void start will run once, and that's it. Void update is called once per frame, as it says just above it. And that means that it constantly runs while the script is active. So if the script is turned off, it will not run. But if it's turned on, it will run constantly. The green lines are known as annotations and they aren't really lines of code. They are just ways of, you could think of it as putting notes on the script. So if you want something, you know, if you've got a really complicated script and you want people to understand what it's doing, you could put annotations, which is dictated by a double slash and then you can put whatever you want after that and that line of code will never be run it's just there as a note so what are we going to do with this script well as we said we're going to rotate the background of our game and to do that we need to add in a variable now a variable is a way of storing information in the script and that can be in almost any type of form so you could have um, a whole number which would be an integer. You could have a decimal number, which would be a float. 
You could have a Boolean, which is true or false. You can have game objects. You can have audio. You can have tons of different types of variables. So because this is our first script, we're going to stay fairly simple and we're just going to have a float, which is a decimal number. And we're going to be dealing inside the update method. So we can actually get rid of the annotations and we can get rid of the void start method because we don't actually need them in this script. So we can select them and hit delete. So how do we declare a variable? Well, easiest way is to just say before void update, but after the open curly bracket for the class, we can say public, and then we declare what type of variable it's going to be. And as I said, it's going to be a float. So float, which is the decimal number. And then we can call this anything we want, as long as it's not something silly or you know, related to the script. So for example, we couldn't call this rotation background. It'd be a bit daft. Uh, just be sensible when naming things, as long as they're not the same as a method or a class or anything like that. So we're going to call this rotate speed. And we're going to make it equal to one with a semicolon. Now, what I've done here is I've said that the variable is called rotate speed and it's a decimal number, but I haven't declared a decimal. Don't need to worry about that because a float can deal with both whole numbers and decimal numbers. And we've said it is equal to one and then we've ended it with a semicolon. That semicolon is a way of the script understanding that this is the end of this line of code. Please move on to the next one. So it would do, it would follow it down until it found another line of code it would understand. In this case, the update method and then it would start that update method so we would need to tell it what do we do here well the way we've got to look at it is how are we actually going to rotate what we want to rotate well there are a couple of different ways we could define um, the other object that we're rotating which is the background as a variable but the best way to do it is to probably say this dot transform dot rotate now you'll notice at this point a couple of things are looking a bit strange this is highlighted in a kind of purpley color but the other words are not don't worry about this too much but one thing that is important is the capitalization you'll notice that this and transform are not capitalized however rotate is you can usually find out which one is relevant uh, by looking at the components but in most cases when using something like Visual Studio it will tell you what you need to do. So we're going to rotate this on the Z or Z axis. So if we open curly bracket we now have the opportunity to put um, an X number, a Y number and a Z number and the way this works is we can rotate on either the X axis, the Y axis or the Z, Z axis. Obviously the um, red one is the X, green one is the Y, and the blue one is the Z. So we don't want to rotate on X, so we can put zero. We don't want to rotate on Y, so put zero. But we do want to rotate on the Z or Z. And we can actually put, instead of a number in here, rotate speed. And then comma. And then we also need to put in here space dot world and then close bracket and semicolon so let's quickly recap what we've done here this script is going to tell whatever object it's attached to so this this object that it's attached to it's telling it to transform and we want it to rotate and we want it to rotate every frame which is what the void update does nothing on the x nothing on the y but whatever is in the variable known as rotate speed that's what we want it to rotate by every frame and space.world is a way of telling it to do it relative to the world around it it's always wise to have something like this because if your world changes or you know there could be a multitude of factors which could affect this but making uh, this rotation relative to the world around it is going to make sure that it is okay now we just need to save our script. You'll know you've saved it when you've just got that 
nice and green. You can hold control and press S to save if you want to, or you can go the old fashioned way, file and save. So let's head back into Unity and it will take a moment because it is compiling that script. Now, if you have any problems with your script, um, you'll see down the bottom, you may have some red text saying there's an error. If you go to your console, it will tell you where the error is and more than likely how to fix it. If not, um, usually it's a case of capitalization, uh, a missing semicolon, something like that. So for now, that short, simple script is just going to rotate whatever object that it is attached to. And we want to rotate this image right here. So theoretically, what should happen is it will rotate like so, because we've changed this Z position here. And all I did there was hold the mouse over Z and just hold the left mouse button down and move it across the screen. So by default, I want it to be zero, but we are going to attach that rotation script to the image. So drag and drop onto there. And we have that rotate speed set as one. So if we press play now, we should see something happen and that looks crazy in the scene view it really does look crazy but this is how it would look on the screen of anyone playing it so let's change that rotate speed now to much less let's have it as 0 0.1 and press play and you can see it rotates much slower even maybe that's too fast maybe we want a much slower rotation just something in the background that's happening. So you could also have that as 0.01. Remember, we're working with decimals here, so we don't need to worry too much about what we're doing. But there we go. I think that looks a little bit better. Remember, this is what we're aiming for here. This is the screen. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit more UI to our scene. Uh, kind of preparing for when we start really delving into creating those questions and answers and everything. So we're going to deal a little bit more with these buttons here. So I'm going to double click on answer A and zoom in. And I'm now going to right click on it, go to UI, and I'm going to click panel right there. Now it looks like it's faded a little bit, but it does also mean that if we um, press play, we can still click it. Now that panel is going to come in very, very handy because we can kind of manipulate the buttons a little bit uh, in terms of color. It's entirely up to you how you want to manipulate it with color. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the panel. Uh, I'm going to click the color. I'm going to have it as a slight bluish color, I think. And Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to have three sets of panels. Now, the reason I'm doing it this way and not manipulating the color on the buttons is because when it comes to the coding, it's going to be kind of fun to deal with it in the coding sense. Uh, a lot of what I do here really is coding more than anything because I think it's what people struggle with more than anything. So it's a good way of us learning more about coding. So this panel, I'm going to hold control and press D. And I'm going to change the color to green. And I'm going to hold control press D once again and change that color to red. And that's going to be a nice deep red, I think. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that panel, I'm going to rename and have this as open panel. I'll have this one as correct panel. And have this one as wrong panel. And a clever little trick that we can use here is if we select wrong panel and correct panel both together, all I've done there is hold control and select both of them objects. And up here you'll see a little tick. Click that tick and it will revert back to that blue. Same principle can work if we untick the blue and then click on wrong panel, for example. We just click that and it turns it red. So hopefully you can see what we're going for here. We're going to use a cool little method to turn a panel on if we get it right or wrong. So if we uh, retick open panel, and what I'm going to do is change the text to full on black. And I think I'll do that with all of the answers. Change the color of the text to jet black, just so it's a little bit more visible. 
Now what we can do is we can place those correct, wrong and open panels on the other buttons as well. Rather than do the same as what we've just done, we can actually take each one, hold control, press D to duplicate, and drag and drop them onto answer B. Now all you need to do is where it's got left up here, change that to zero, and then change right also to zero. And what that will do is it will shift it over to uh, answer B. So if we were to turn the correct on, turn open off, we can see, well, imagine if we just press that, that was the correct answer, brilliant. So by default, I do want to have open panel on and the other two off. I'm also going to rename it just so it is identical. Um, in fact, now I think about it, maybe we should actually name it as open panel A, A and wrong panel A. And obviously these would be B. This one would also be B. And this one would be C. No, it wouldn't. It'd be B, wouldn't it? <laughs> Silly me. Uh, okay, so let's take those three again. Hold control, press D. Uh, put them on that. Change that. And this one. Oops. And change this one again. But remember, we do have to select them all and zero out the... Uh, coordinates up here, so 0, 0, 0, 0, and it puts it center again of those. And finally, I'll control, press D, and let's change these. So next tutorial, what we're going to do is we are going to do some more c -sharp programming. Uh, we are going to create... Uh, yeah, we're going to create the uh, script for the question displaying on screen. Basically what I mean by that is we're going to have the script change what that says there. So how much wood, 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 wood. We're going to change what that says via a script. And let's just zero this out to finish off. Perfect. So until that next tutorial, thanks very much for watching, guys.